You've heard what's happened to Canada's East Coast fishery. There are too few fish, too many fishermen. Some Nova Scotians argue it is time to change the way we fish. They want to replace big trawlers and draggers with more environmentally friendly fishing by hook and line. In a moment, seven Nova Scotia fishermen debate the idea, but first, some background. Let's define fishing terms. This is a trawler. 50 trawlers will take 50% of the fish caught this year off Canada's east coast. This is a dragger. 400 of these will take another 25% of the fish caught this year. Both trawlers and draggers drag a big net behind the ship, so both are really draggers. They move, so they're called mobile gear. This is a longliner, no moving net. Instead, it sets out hooks on a line. 2,000 longliners, gillnetters, and handliners will take the remaining 25% of fish caught off this coast this year. The gear does not move, so it's often called fixed gear. Now to Cape Sable Island. At the government wharf in Clark's Harbor, the longliner fleet is tied up. In the retired fisherman's haven, longlinermen and dragger fishermen have gathered to debate hook and line versus dragger. We begin with the charge that draggers destroy the ocean environment. How does a dragger destroy habitat? As you can see, the habitat is very delicate, fragile. That come off of the, the ocean bottom? Right. It takes generations for this to develop. And it takes a second for it to be destroyed. Precisely how, though, Derek? I mean, what, what, what breaks that off? Mainly the scouring done by the huge dragger doors, chains, cables, and rock hoppers. As, as, that dragger, as that dragger net is pulled across the bottom. Right. What, what's, dragger, why'd you bring these little fish? That goes to show you how desperate we are now to... Well, what are they? Fish. They're red fish caught by national sea products used as lobster bait even too small for lobster bait. They're red fish caught for lobster bait by National Sea. How were they taken? By an otter trawl, indiscriminate. You, you mean there's a trawl that, that where the mesh is so small it would catch a fish that size? Right, yes there is. They're used every day. If a farmer went out and started plowing his field every day, day after day after day, what they do? if you line seven, seven tractors up, plowed that, day after day, month after month after month, and plowed it back and forth. That's the same as one dragger going back and forth and just towing big heavy doors, heavy rollers, big round chunks of rubber, chain and everything else just along the bottom and just digging it up and plowing it up day after day after day. We have uh, dragger fishermen here with us and uh, time for you to say something. You, you expect me to think that you're not going to catch a baby fish with a hook that size, Derek? I mean, that... Oh, that every, everybody's bought, you know, brought props here you know, today. That, that chooses that's, to bite, we'll let it go it back. It chooses to bite. What small. if it happens to hook him in the tail on his way out? Then he's caught. Now, wait, wait a minute now, Brian. Wait, wait a minute. Brian, 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 what is that? That's a hook. Yeah, well, hold it up again for me. A, a hook used in what way? How's that used? <laughs> it's a long line hook. This is fixed gear. Yeah, it's a fixed gear hook uh, used on a, on a long line or a hand line. Have a piece of bait on it? Uh, sometimes it has, yeah, it has bait. Yes. As a rule. And, and what size fish would that take? Virtually anything that, that's big enough for its mouth to open and take that fish. Yeah. We've, led to, we've led the charge on trying to make gear more selective, trying to eliminate bycatches, trying to, you know, we've, we've perfected a, a, sh a shrimp grade technology down in eastern Nova Scotia that's brought ashore a, a $4 million a year industry now. We've, uh, we've changed the configuration of the caught ends. We've, uh, we've got a, a user pay dockside monitoring system. We've got guys out now doing selectivity experiments on trying to eliminate bycatches of different things. I mean, we're really trying to, what I'm asking you to do is to say, listen, this is truly half of the industry or larger, not to ban us because you don't have all the facts, to allow us at least to have time to prove one way or the other and to try to mitigate these impacts. There's one fact that we have to live with, is that before the dragger technology started, there was enough fish out there to feed the world. Now there's not enough fish out there to feed us. And the only one change that has been the uh, dragger technology was developed. And the draggermen say that they're doing all, the, all that's, that needs to be done to make sure that they don't take fish of that size. Oh, Jim, no, 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 is, is that true or is it not true? Jim, let's, he's not right here in front of me, I've got a personal logbook from a man that fished on a dragger for six months. He got so disgusted he quit after that. One toe, 
83,000 pounds. Now, if you set 100 or 10 tubs or 20 tubs or 50 tubs of gear, you've got a hook six feet apart. You can only catch one fish per hook. They may not all be large. It's according to what fish are available in the ocean. But when you go along and take 83,000 of mixed cod and headache together, you're wiping out that entire stock that entire school of fish. The long liars say the draggers, the draggers say it's always easy like eating. Uh, Pass the it, buck. Yeah, well, a lot of people in a lot of sectors say draggers, and some draggermen say that dragging is not the way to catch fish anymore. If you've got boat quotas, you're allowed, if, if I'm allowed to take, uh, say, a 10,000 pound off of Brown's Bank, that's yeah. all I'm allowed for the year, just yeah. say, for instance. And a long liar is allowed to take 10,000 pound off of Brown's Bank. The same amount of fish, what's the difference who catches it? If I have big mesh gear on and catch 10,000 pound of, of fish off of Brown's Bank, with big mesh gear on. You're letting the small ones through. Through. Right? Yeah. Okay. 10,000 pounds come off that bank. I can't, 10, I'm, I'm not right. Jim, I think this is a very small demonstration. It shows very easily what happens out there on the dragger bottom. Here, hold it. Well, well, you. Right. Grab your coffee cup there for a second. What's the. Wait a minute now. What, what's this? What's this? No, no environmental damage. Right. No marks. There's nothing Nothing at the bottom. Nothing. Simple as that. Wait, wait, wait a minute. What is that? That's theatrics. That's, the that's theatrics for you. Well, it is theatrical, but what, what, what is that net? What that's, is that? That's, what, that's, that's, what a, that's, a, that's a piece of caught in material that I brought. Bring, bring it up here. What, the, what is this thing here? Yeah, 130, that's our caught in meter. That's the caught in. What's a caught in? That's the back, end of, that's the back end of an otter trawl where the fish yeah, start to collect and build from the now, caught in out towards the wing. Now, what, what we have done with. Is this the kind of. Wait a minute. Is this the kind of thing that you haul? Yes. It is. This kind of thing you haul when you're dragging? Yes. Yeah. But what we have done in the last number of years and what we're trying to force all draggers to do with this type of twine is that it used to be that this was, this was towed like this. It used to be that this was towed as a, as a net and then the fish depended upon escaping like that. Right. We've changed that. We've demanded that every dragger that ever goes tows his net like this. Square. Square. You can't restrict it with strength yeah. and straps. Show that to the camera so you they can, can see the squares. That's you can it. get every every animal that's big enough to get out through that will get out through that. And, and we're you put the only thing, Jim. Well, those little... then you tie a strap around like this, no. and it ties it together, no, so, you, so you can't get out. It's not square you anymore. Then you square can't mesh. restrict it like you do diamond mesh with strengthening straps. It stays it's open it's constantly. It's all right, all right. Okay, we've seen the demonstration. That's illegal. Of course it is. It's you're, illegal. There's a lot of legal things going on. Wait a minute now. Cameron, your demonstration, put the net up here and hauling everything off, was to, was to say what? That's what the bottom looks like when you're finished. Oh, no, you can, you can take a little piece of bottom, go across it once and say, no, there's no damage. No, there's nothing left. Of course, take your vacuum cleaner and go across the floor. There's no dust left after you're finished either. The principle is the same. The technology that has come into the fishery in the last 20, 30 years is enormous. Oh, yeah. Now we for can go sectors. out for, for all, all sectors. sectors, but all sectors, when I put a string of hooks down six feet apart, I can only take one fish per hook. I know the fish is there maybe when I'm setting the gear, but I don't know where he goes. When you're towing a big net behind you, you find the school, you go over it a couple of times, know which way it's going, then you haul the big net across it, that school's gone. It's in your net, you haul it up, put it aboard, and go home. What you've done Why is not? taken the smallest segment of the industry and forced them to steal to survive. That's what you've done. While we're stealing to, uh, to, to make a living, the international fleets, the international companies, National Sea, FBI, and the rest of them are, are taking the Canadian resource away from us. Brian did his demonstration on hooks. Yeah. It's a minority, the number of boats that kept those aboard, number yeah. one. That would be probably the smallest used in this area. There's two right. different sizes. Depends the, on the season and the fish. I but, see. Right. You brought in some, some bigger long line hooks to... to yeah, uh, they're not all this here. Yeah, that, the majority a, of fish were used to be... They're not all that size. ...misleading people. Like right. If you take a net like that and tow it out there and then put a liner in it, what can, hell can escape? We're not going to catch a little fish like he had there. What's, what's a liner? Somebody asked me to ask you that. Small mesh gear. Small mesh, small that. mesh gear. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it goes inside a bigger, a bigger mesh net. Yeah, you'll put it in there. But, but if Are they have, legal or illegal? Illegal. Absolutely and illegal. And who uses them? Some people, I guess, that's got lots of quota and they, and they want to catch uh, small fish, uh, you know. Some people that feel they want to see the big bag. But they, yeah, I, are, I they, are, they, are they common, these liners, in the, in the dragger business? No, it, I would they're say not common, no. But, they, but there's still a few idiots that use them. Yeah. I mean, I would we say even, uh, there was even an offshore boat caught in uh, December in 4VN yeah. fishing one. I yeah. mean, the liner. That's right. Yeah. The greedy boys have her all now, and the Canadian people are left out. They forced us into an individual boat quota system, and we, they were, we were forced to buy each other out. So we, we cut the fleet by a, a third or more. We buy each other out. The bottom line is, is that the government is saying Crosby is being tough. Every fleet must live within its quotas. 
big business, big government is out to get rid of the inshore fishery. You say what? They're what? They're wiping out the culture of our province. The way of life, living for so many people, is based on non-destructive fishing methods. If you, if you, and, and you believe that your government is committed to doing that? Right. Do you share I mean, that? I can, you, I can provide plenty of proof that the ocean bottom is delicate, gill nets are destructive. They won't listen at all. You're born here. Um, when did you go into the fishery? How old were you? I was 17, just out of high school. Your father fish? Father fished, his father fished. It's in our blood. Are you, are you fishing now? Well, not right at the moment, but I'll plan on going handlining later on if we're allowed to go. What do you think is the future of your industry? Not good. Under the way Crosby's men do now, in probably three years, it'll be nothing but a rock pile and garbage dump out there, as far as I'm concerned. So he's got to act now to stop the destruction. And if you, if you were he, if you were John Crosby, what would you do? Have a self-sustaining, non-destructive fishery. What's that mean? Get rid of the draggers? Right. All of them? All of them. Trawlers, offshore, 65-footers, right. everybody, all of them. Right. The, the fish can be caught by non-destructive means, uh, ground fish. Brian Giroux. Well, I guess you could say that probably about uh, 30,000 people in Atlantic Canada disagree with them, whether they're processors or they're people who fish on the boats. Um, unless we can calmly and rationally try to, 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 to effectively change these patterns, we, we, can't allow, we can't allow somebody just with a stroke of a pen to, to wipe out 30,000 people. Along with the draggers, along with National Sea, the small under 45-foot fixed gear boats this year have 1,500 ton to share between approximately 300 boats. National Seas got 7,200 ton for three boats. And he's going to let them go out and kill that only hope we've got to come, for that stock to come back. It's unbelievable, Jim. Just can't believe it. Cameron McKenzie, on the same subject, the man has proposed the draggers be uh, eliminated. What do you say? I say properly managed. The fishery can wipe out unemployment in Atlantic Canada like it was before they started introducing government, subsid government subsidization, government mismanagement into the fisheries. When the fishery was managed by fishermen, we had fish. So you're saying let more people take uh, less fish each? And are, are you saying do away with draggers or not? I'm not, not quite clear. Draggers will destroy themselves. Cut out the subsidies to dragging, cut out the subsidies to National Sea, cut out the subsidies to FBI, They'll self-destruct in months. Brian Giroux. I think we're tightly controlled. We, we're, we're not asking for the lifting of those controls. We're cooperating with the controls, and we're cooperating with trying to get other fleet sectors in line, too. We've got to try to manage this fishery so it's sustainable over the long term. I agree with him on that aspect. But I think that, that to, 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 to totally eliminate a gear sector without at least dealing with the issues that this man is raising is, is wrong. If you did what was suggested here by, by Derek, and you shut down the draggers, you'd, you'd be closing, um, what, 60% of the fish plants in Nova Scotia and eliminating uh, no, uh, no, hundreds? No, no, no. You would. No, no, that's a misnomer. Well, why, why not? Let the long liners go. We'd well, I'm here it. to be educated. Tell me. Well, we'd, uh, the long line fleet could supply the, the fish and a quality fish, and where all the fillets are good. You should talk about social economics and how many people can be employed in each group. You know, it might be quite economical for a couple of boats to go out there, a couple of those patches, freezer trawlers, and catch all the fish, but they only got 90 people aboard. What the hell does that mean? Yeah, but, but the social and economics you mentioned is not, not widely discussed uh, when, when it comes to talking about the fishing industry anymore. Because they be. don't want to talk about it. When the Kirby Task Force designed a program to give Frank Sobey 80% of the Scotian shelf resource, that was social economics in the offshore. They gave him a $200 million rationalization uh, program. That's $200 million of taxpayers' money, a gift to the richest family in Nova Scotia. Well, they say the fishery's gone so far now that there, there, there can no longer be a social, uh, uh, a social motivation. It can't be used to keep people working to, to support small rural communities. That's what they say. Yes, yes, we, do away with, we do away with the destructive technology and bring back the longliners. We'll put a lot of people to work, probably double the people to work, catching bait, baiting the hooks on the boats, the whole thing, a lot.